It's a, a passage of scripture that we've probably heard before. It's probably been taught to us if we've been in, in Sunday school or anything since our youth. This is one of the, of the very popular lessons that, that we teach children. Um, I want to start reading in the second verse of John chapter 6. It says, And a great multitude followed him, because they saw his miracles, which he did on them that were diseased. And Jesus went up into a mountain, and there he sat with his disciples, and the Passover, and the Passover a feast of the Jews, was nigh. And Jesus then lifted up his eyes and saw a great company come unto him. He said unto, saith unto Philip, Hence, Whence shall we buy bread that these may eat? And this he said to prove him, for he himself knew that he, what he would do. Philip answered him, Two hundred penny worth of bread is not sufficient for them, that every one of them may take a little. One of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, saith unto him, There is a lad here which hath five barley loaves and two small fishes, but what are they among so many? And Jesus said, Make the men sit down. Now there was much grass in the place, so the men sat down in number about five thousand. And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down, and likewise of the fishes as much as they would. When they were filled, he said unto his disciples, Gather up the fragments that remain, that nothing be lost. Therefore they gathered them together and filled twelve baskets with the fragments of the five barley loaves, which remained over and above unto them that had eaten. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for this story, this retelling of history in the life of your son, the disciples, and all those that were there that day. I ask, Father, that you would help us as we look to your word this morning, that you would know, that we would know what you would have to say to us that, dear Lord, we can draw closer to the work that you would have for each of us to do. Go with us now and receive honor and glory unto thyself in all that is said and done. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. On this day, a great multitude followed Jesus around. And I don't want to focus so much on the miracle. The miracle is normally where we do focus in this passage of Scripture. The end result of it. But as I look to this passage of Scripture, I can't help but think back. And, and there are some here that may know what I'm about to say and some that are not. There was a man named Monty Hall. And he was a game show host. And it was called Let's Make a Deal. And he would walk around in that studio audience, those that were lucky enough to be potential contestants. And I remember very plainly him walking around with a $100 bill and walking up to a random woman in the audience and saying, if you got a stick of gum, I want to buy it from you. A $100 bill. And oh, she would start tearing her purse up looking for a stick of gum. She was looking to see what she had that she could give to Monty Hall so that he would then bless her with something, but he could be able to use whatever it was, however he wanted to use it. This morning, as we look to this passage of Scripture, the question I have is, what do you have that God can use? to bless you and others. But see, this life is not about me. This life is not about you. This life is about God. This life is about honoring Him and giving Him what He wants, giving Him what He needs, showing Him the love that He deserves because of the love that He showed us first. 
So here this big multitude is talking like at the end there about 5,000 men. I don't know how many women and children were with them. I know this congregation was not all men. Obviously because there was a lad with them that had some food. He was not counted as one of the men. But they looked around. They said, it's getting supper time. We, gonna, we, can, we don't have anything to feed these people. We're going to have to send them home so they can feed them, so they can eat. Christ said, have them sit down. What do we got? He said, there's one boy here that's got just a little bit. It's probably his lunch or something that mom made. But he willingly gave it. It's what he had. He didn't have a truckload of corn. He didn't have a freezer full of beef. He had these loaves and these fishes. That's what he had. And he gave it to Jesus. I want you to pay attention to the, to the order of the events here. God had blessed this boy with this food. He may have caught it. His dad may have caught the fish. I don't know how he came into being of the fish, but God had provided the fish. His mother, his grandmother, somebody else may have baked the bread, but God provided the ingredients to make the bread. Everything he had in his possession, from his life to his clothes to his food, God had provided him. And he was returning to God what God had given so that God could bless it, so that God could use it. Once it became Christ's again, Jesus did bless it. He thanked the Father for it. Because he knew that God the Father, that God had given this son, this young lad, what he had for, for God's glory. See, God doesn't give us anything that's not going to glorify him and benefit us in some shape, form, or fashion. Well, Brother Kevin, I don't know. I've gone through some pretty tough times. My family's had some pretty rough things go on. But God had a reason for it. He either had a reason for making it happen or a reason for allowing it to happen. If you think of the troubles that Job went through, God was glorified in the end. And Job was rewarded for being true and faithful. See, that's the way it is with us too. We may have troubles. We may have trials. We have difficulties. But God can use those to bless us and or others. Well, this young man gave what he had to Christ. Christ had been asked thanks or given thanks for it. And he started breaking it up. I don't think he took those loaves and fishes and handed them out as whole pieces. He broke it up so it could be distributed. Catch that? So it could then be distributed. Be given to others. The boy had it. Now it's going to be given out to other people. After God blessed it. So Christ then took it. He gave it to the disciples. The disciples then took these baskets, these fragments. They went out. And they started handing it out to other people. And as we read that passage of Scripture, he says in verse 11, And Jesus took the loaves, and when he had given thanks, he distributed to the disciples, and the disciples to them that were set down. And likewise of the fishes, as much as they would. Have you ever been in a place where somebody has handed out a piece of paper? Like maybe you're sitting in a church or you're sitting in some kind of some kind of conference hall or something, 
and, and somebody's got a stack of papers and they walk to the end of the aisle and they kind of get a rough count of how many is there and they'll take that many out and they'll hand it to this guy. And that one will hand them and they'll just make their way down. See, it starts with one person. The person that had all the original copies took them and gave them to the people that are then walking down the aisles, giving it to somebody on the, on the aisle and then they're passing it. It just keeps spreading. It keeps growing. And it's not one person doing it all. It started with one. And then it grew out. That's what happened this day. The boy gave. Christ blessed. Gave to the disciples. The disciples then went and started handing out. And they were handing out. And everybody enjoyed. What did they have? Something to satisfy the need that was present. They needed fed physically. Today, we look around at this old world. I have got to where I do not like to watch the news at all. It's gotten rough. And I don't mean rough so much as the violence, even though that's bad too. But the world is straying so far away from God. Sin. Always been there. Always will be. But it seems more prevalent today than ever before. I don't know that it's just known about more now than ever before or if it's really grown. But there's a need. A big need. The need for Jesus Christ. Now I know Brother Tony stands in this pulpit week in and week out and gives you the word. And this morning I'm laying out what God has put on me. The world's got problems. We've got problems. If you don't have a problem every day with Satan coming at you, he may already have you. You might ought to be careful. But see, the world is sin sick and it needs a cure. Which goes back to my question a while ago. What do you have? What are you in possession of that God can use to give to others to help them in their need like this little boy had this morning or on this day, on this evening? Do you know Jesus yourself? Do you have Him? As your Lord and Savior, have you been satisfied spiritually so that your sins have been forgiven, so that you have a home in heaven waiting on you as the world needs for them? This little boy had some fish. He had some bread. We have Jesus Christ himself we have salvation we have our testimony we can tell people where we were did you catch that we can tell people where we were and where he's brought us is it going to be easy no Am I telling you to go out and intentionally knock on doors and and to confront people and make them mad and get slapped and get spat upon and all that? No. Not everybody wants it. Not everybody has a desire. See, the children of Israel, they walked around in a desert for a long time. 
And during their journeys there in that desert, there came an occasion where there had been sin in the camp, to put it mildly. And serpents were sent their way. And the bite of those serpents were deadly. So God told Moses to make a serpent and to put it on a staff or put it on a rod and elevate it up so that anybody that looked on it would be saved. It became their choice then. A plan was made and put into action. God gave the materials. God gave the craftsmanship. God gave the direction as to what to do. And then it was on those that needed the help to look upon that serpent to receive life. Those that were bitten that did not look, they died. They died in the state they were in. A few hundred years later, the world needed a Savior. Once again, God had a plan. He sent His Son. He allowed Him to be elevated upon a cross that any that looked to Him, put their faith in Him, should be saved. But we have to look to Him. But I want you to think on that scene of the cross for just a minute. As Christ hung there, as He had been beaten, as He had been ridiculed, as He had that crown of thorns placed upon His head, and the sign of mockery above Him, as He hung there with the spikes in His hands and His feet, He looked down and he saw his mother. And he saw John. And he said, Mother, behold your son. Son, behold your mother. But he didn't mention Peter. He didn't mention Andrew. He didn't mention any of the other apostles. Why? They weren't there. See, they weren't looking upon the cross. On that day. They weren't looking upon the Savior of the world. On that day. But just a few days later. After he had laid in that tomb. The ladies went. To anoint his body. Because they couldn't anoint his body. Before they put him in the tomb. There wasn't time. The ladies got there. The tomb was open. The stone had been rolled back. His body was no longer there. He had been raised from the dead. They now knew everything that they had been told over the time in the, His ministry. They understood the promise of life. And they just turned and went about their own business, didn't they? No. They ran to tell others that others would know the truth. They now had something that God had given them that others needed. Hope in Christ. Are you like Thomas? All the apostles were gathered in a room except Thomas. Christ showed up. Then when he was departed, they got with Thomas and they told Thomas what they, what they saw. They, they'd met Christ. He's alive. He's living. Thomas said, unless I can touch him, unless I can put my hands in those wounds, See, he heard the word, but he still had to see, he thought. He still had to touch. But he had heard. He had the choice. It was his. 
It was now his. They gave what they had to Thomas. They had their knowledge of Jesus Christ and the resurrection. They had the knowledge that everything that they had gone through, all of his teachings, they now understood. If I'm not mistaken, after Christ's resurrection, there was a couple of men walking down the road and they were talking, and Christ joined up with them. And he said, what are you talking about? He said, well, hadn't you heard? And, and, and they were sad. They were sorrowful. And he wound up going and eating. And he said, he asked the blessings. And then he departed. They said, didn't it burn within us? Why didn't we recognize this? Why didn't we know who he was and see him and realize who he was? Once again, I ask, today, this very hour, what do you have that God can use to bless others? This child had bread and fish. Others that have been mentioned had their own testimony. Even Paul, who was struck on the road to Damascus, when he stood before the king, the king, after hearing his testimony, said, Almost thou persuaded me to be a Christian. Paul did everything he could with what God had given him, but it was still the king's choice. But Paul was not guilty because he put it out there. On this day, the bread and the fish was distributed. If they didn't eat, they went away hungry. It was their own fault. And the end of this story. The end of your story. When it's all said and done. And you give away everything that you've got. And I'm not talking about houses and cars and land and money. And When you give away what you've got. When you give away your testimony of Jesus Christ in your life, what He has done for you, you've still got it. They've got it. And there's even leftovers. How do you like that? And if it was good to eat the first time, it's good to eat the second time too. See, we can relive. We can go back. A memory can, can be terrible sometimes because Satan uses it to remind us of what we left behind. But God can use it to remind us where we're no longer at. He can remind us of what He's done for us. And He can feed us again with that glory and that salvation that we can strengthen our trust. This morning, do you have it? Do you have His salvation? Do you have a testimony in your possession that you can say, God, you have blessed me with this. You have blessed me with salvation, with your forgiveness. Blessed is I give to others so that others can have it too. Or maybe you're sitting there this morning saying, well, you know, I've heard it preached. I've had conversations with people about God's love. But I kind of like the life I'm living right now. I don't think I'm ready for that salvation. I don't want to be doom and gloom. 
This was a rough week in the lives of the few families that I'm close with. On Thursday, I attended the funeral of a 54-year-old man who was a deacon at the church. No clue it was coming. Yesterday, I attended the funeral of a 64-year-old uh, distant relative. No clue it was coming. We don't know. And if we're not ready, it's too late when it comes. This morning, do you know the man that hung on the cross in the middle? Do you know the Son of Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior so that you can then tell others? So that you have that testimony. Look what I had and look where I am now. And oh, by the way, don't just look where I am now. Let me tell you about where I'm headed. Whether it's a cabin in the corner, whether it's a mansion, it really don't matter. What matters is that we'll be in the presence of the eternal God that saved us from the pits of hell. Do you have that this morning? If not, today's the day to get it. And if you've got it, are you taking it and keeping it to yourself? Or are you saying, Lord, bless it and help me to distribute it where you want it distributed? So that others can have a bite. So that others can have it. God is standing there, much like Monty Hall. And he said, I've got me and I've got heaven. All I ask is, are you willing to give yourself to me? Let's make a deal. This morning, if we stand together just a minute, I know Let's Make a Deal was just a game show. It was all fun. They dressed up in all kinds of outfits to try to get the attention of the host. But I'm going to tell you this morning, God knows who you are. You don't have to get His attention. He's already paying attention. And life is not a game. Heaven and hell are both real. And we're going to be in one or the other when this old life ends. These altars, this altar is open if you need to come. If you need to make that deal this morning for the first time, come talk to him. Say, I want to be one of yours. I want what you have promised. Maybe you already know him. Maybe you already have him as yours. He already has you as he is. Maybe you just need to come and say, Lord, help me to take what you've blessed me with and give it to others that they can live too. Because you didn't give it to me just for me. You came and died for the world. What do you have today? Father, as we come to You again, You have given us so much more than we are worthy of. 
for not we're not even worthy of the breath that you've given us to live much less the gift of your son I ask this morning that you would be with us that you would help us to be bold and that you would help us to put our faith in you stronger tomorrow than it's ever been before and, and, and start today Dear Lord, the world is lost and you've given us the cure. Help us to know how and when and where to distribute as you have prepared those that are waiting for us to arrive with that blessing from you. Thank you for this story that you've allowed to be pinned down. The events in the life of your son this morning. Help us to honor you in all things. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.